found? I didn't hear a yes. Okay, good. Good morning. I'm Dennis Gerhard Stein. I'm the county attorney's public information officer. Thank you for being here on such short notice. Uh, we're going to have a few opening remarks from the county attorney, uh, and uh, he'll do a quick introduction, and then we'll get to questions. So let's start with the county attorney. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here today as I want to share a recent development with the public about how this office will handle the prosecution review of the police involved shooting incident that resulted in the death of Philando Castile. On July 8th, I said I would reserve my decision as to whether I would forego this office's long-standing policy of presenting police-involved shooting incidents to a grand jury and make the decision myself. I remain firmly committed to being thoughtful and deliberate about how I make this decision. I recognize that the transparency and legitimacy of this process is absolutely necessary to ensure public trust and confidence. I will continue to be actively engaged in this case as the BCA investigation proceeds and will inform the public of my decision with respect to a grand jury at a later date. Since July 8th, I have been asked by multiple individuals, representatives including the ACLU and the attorney for Philando Castile's family to request the attorney general and the governor to appoint a special prosecutor. While some have been careful to point out that their requests are not about me personally or my office, they see this suggested route as a way to engender the public's trust and confidence in how we arrive at our decisions relative to a grand jury and whether to bring charges in this case. I have spent much of the past two weeks contemplating these requests and concerns expressed by members of the community and I have come to a conclusion. When our Ramsey County residents elected me county attorney, they entrusted me with upholding the laws of our state and the values of our community and I took an oath to do so. That is what I signed up for when I took this job. I understand that there is distrust of the system and some may question the ability of prosecutors to hold police accountable when we rely on them to present cases to our office. However, if I handed this case off to any other person outside of the duties and authority of my office, I would not only be abdicating my responsibility, but potentially creating additional mistrust. A standalone, unaccountable special prosecutor without an election certificate would not be beholden to any of these values or obligations and would fail to provide the legitimacy this case requires and deserves. With every decision I make in this case, I am firmly committed to upholding the interests of justice, public transparency, and ensuring the absolute integrity of this case. I believe the most important role of a chief prosecutor is to ensure the public's trust and confidence in the legal process. Therefore, in light of these considerations, I have chosen to incorporate a special prosecutor into our team to provide independent perspective bolstered by the authority of this office. I have not come to this decision lightly, nor do I expect that this decision will satisfy all of the concerns raised by some members of our community. 
In determining whom to appoint, it was important for me to select someone who doesn't have any connection to law enforcement interests in Ramsey County, someone who doesn't have any personal or professional connection to this case, who has not publicly weighed in on any aspects of it, and who can remain fair and impartial. Someone who has extensive legal experience and background, who fundamentally understands the complex challenges ahead of us, and who will help ensure faithful adherence to the law and in the pursuit of justice. Someone who is competent, fair, and ethical, who will bring fresh eyes and an independent perspective to our work. This independent perspective can only enhance the integrity and legitimacy of our decisions in this case. This is ultimately what justice requires. With all of this in mind, I have asked Don Lewis to serve as a special prosecutor to enhance our team. Don has great credibility in the legal profession. He has a wealth of investigative and prosecutorial experience, and he has roots in the Rondo community in St. Paul. Don truly embodies the spirit of public service. After graduating from Harvard Law School, he spent the following decade working for the United States Department of Justice. His first three years were in the Civil Rights Division in Washington, D.C., where he worked on desegregation and other civil rights cases in the South. He then returned to Minneapolis and worked for nearly seven years as a federal criminal prosecutor in the United States Attorney's Office here in Minnesota. Since leaving the Department of Justice, Don has spent 28 years in private practice and is a founding shareholder of what is now Nyland Johnson Lewis. His private practice has included criminal defense and he has served as a special investigator on several high profile matters. In addition, Don served as the Dean of Hamlin University School of Law for five years. As a founding member and leader in the Minnesota Association of Black Lawyers, Don now devotes much of his time to teaching and mentoring the next generation of attorneys. Don will be a significant asset to our team. His experience and reputation in our legal community is second to none. I want to be clear, and this is a really important point. Don has not merely been retained as a consultant. I am not simply asking for his advice or approval of decisions that others have made. As an appointed special prosecutor, Don will be an integral member of our team who will review this case with me and be substantially involved in our decision to charge, decline, or present the BCA investigation to a Ramsey County Grand Jury. I'm honored that Don has accepted this important assignment and that he will work alongside me as we undertake this critical effort on behalf of our community. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Don Lewis uh, to say a few words. Thank you, John. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. I am a Ramsey uh, County native. Uh, so is my wife. Uh, we both grew up in the Rondo area of St. Paul. My three children uh, live here. I have a lot invested in this community. Uh, so when John Choi contacted me about this appointment, I felt both honored and uh, compelled to accept it. Honored because of the con confidence that he has displayed uh, in me and my law practice, uh, compelled because of the call to serve my community and its criminal justice system at a time uh, when many view it with uh, anxiety and mistrust. The death of Philando Castile earlier this month is a tragedy. 
Uh, we all understand the anguish and outrage that many of our residents feel about the loss of yet another black man uh, in an encounter with a police officer. We all see how this incident and others like it around the country have caused deep divisions within our society. And in this case, and others like it, we are all asking hard questions and seeking uh, answers. Here and now, it's important that the BCA conclude a careful and thorough investigation into the shooting death of Mr. Castile, and that John make an impartial and just decision about how the criminal justice system should respond to the facts revealed by that uh, investigation. It is even more critical that the public perceives his decision as fact-based, even-handed, and transparent. And I am committed to helping uh, John and his office achieve these outcomes. I also share his vision of my role on the county attorney's team. I agree that those empowered to decide whether and how to prosecute must be accountable to the public. And I understand why John has chosen not to delegate uh, his public responsibility. At the same time, John has assured me that my involvement in the decision making will be substantial, meaningful, and visible. My hope, whatever the outcome, is that my work with John's office will earn the trust and confidence of the residents of Ramsey County and of the state of Minnesota and especially the trust and confidence of those who today expect the least and fear the worst from our criminal justice system. Again, John, thank you uh, for this opportunity. I uh, appreciate the work that you've done as county attorney and the reputation you and your office has earned over the years to promote social justice, and I'm proud to assist your office in uh, continuing that fine tradition. Thank you. Okay, we'll have a, uh, obviously time for a couple questions. I want to give a couple reminders. Um, this is an active and ongoing investigation, so we're really not able to address the details of the case. I would ask that when I call on you, you just give us the assist of who you are, where you're from. And this time, you know, if there's a specific question you have for one or the other, help us out with that. If there's a question you want for both, you know, leave it at that. So, who would like to start? Uh, we have not talked with the family about this decision. However, we have been in contact uh, with um, the attorney uh, for the family of Philando Castile. Um, they have urged us uh, to appoint an independent special prosecutor. Um, they have, uh, their letter was very similar to what the ACLU uh, had written to us. Um, uh, but at the end of the day, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to provide um, transparency and confidence for the public, and I believe that this is the approach that uh, is the right one for our community. Uh, Cleo Green, KSTP, a uh, very sensitive topic, but did you see it as something needed to bring someone that may be connected to the African American community into this case to join you uh, as a team? I think I laid out kind of what I was looking for, and I think Don um, had all of those things that I wanted. And Don has great uh, credibility in our legal profession. Uh, if you talk to anybody who practices in this town uh, and over in Minneapolis, they will have great respect for his uh, work uh, throughout his entire career. And in addition to that, I really wanted to make sure that uh, we had somebody who had the prosecutorial background because you can't have credibility, I think, coming into um, this type of situation and help me make decisions if you have never tried a case, never lost a case, never won a case. And Don certainly has a, a long, lengthy record of working in the United States Department of Justice. Um, and so I think those uh, things are very important. Of 
So the um, precedent, I don't believe that uh, Ramsey County has done something like this in the past, but I can only ex speak from my own experience. I've been the county attorney since uh, January of 2011. However, um, I think that there is some precedence for this in our local community here. Um, when Tom Johnson was the Hennepin County attorney um, involving um, a very high profile case involving Tysell Nelson, uh, he brought in Bill McGee um, to be a special investigator. Bill is, is an attorney, um, and so he, they chose to call that person a special investigator, but in many ways was very involved um, uh, with respect to the investigation and ultimately the decision of what the Hennepin County Attorney's Office uh, did in that particular case. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that was back in 1990. Um, so there is some uh, precedent, and um, yeah. And so, and your first part of the question was. So Don is going to play a very, very critical role. Um, he is going to be just like uh, an assistant Ramsey County attorney um, involved in this case. And again, and I think this is a really important um, point. You know, I'm not hiring Don to be a consultant or come in and, and agree with things or disagree with things that he hasn't been involved with and actually doing the work. Don's actually going to be doing the work just like the team that I have assembled here in the county attorney's office to help me process uh, this really, really important decision. And if we choose to present the BCA investigation to the grand jury, uh, Don will be a part of that team that does that. Josh. Well, from my perspective, um, I think all of that experience, I mean, it's not just about um, the ultimate outcome. I think a lot of people will, at the end of the day, I think when people are thinking about this case, uh, a lot of people in the public have already jumped to a conclusion. And I know that there's a lot of angst about ultimately that outcome, but in the system of justice, the process is equally important about how you arrive at these decisions to ensure that the fact finding that is conducted is done in a fair and impartial way, it is done thoroughly. And then ultimately the decisions that we make in terms of what we do with this case, I think all of that really, really matters. And so I think one of the most important parts of it is how we arrive at those decisions. And Don uh, has significant experience. Um, being involved with investigative processes and also prosecutorial decisions. And he understands the ethical responsibilities that prosecutors have. You know, prosecutors in this country, uh, we have enormous power. Uh, and we can use them for good or for bad. And one of the things that uh, needs to occur is that we follow our ethical uh, codes that we are uh, subject to, and, and Don understands all of that. He also understands um, you know, good investigation, and I think those are the skills uh, that really need to, to be brought to bear to have that independent perspective. I mean, it's not to say that we don't have that capacity here in our county attorney's office, but I think adding Don's perspective, his private practice experience, his work in the United States Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice, all of that will enhance the quality of what we're going to be doing over the course of, uh, uh, in, the, in the near future. And so that's just really critical. Don, do you want to answer that too? Yeah. Uh, to address your particular question about the Al Flowers investigation, I, I'll just say, say three things. Um, first of all, the facts in that case uh, were no, did not in any way reach the severity of the issues that I think are raised uh, in this case. Uh, that case involved the use, uh, the question of whether or not excessive force was used uh, against someone who was resisting uh, an arrest. Uh, so the fact circumstances are, are, are um, very, very different. 
The, um, the other thing uh, that, I'll, that I'll mention is that um, I have been involved throughout my career in situations where I was representing the government, but also in situations where I was representing clients adverse to the government. And I've been situa situations where I might have been adverse to police officers, situations where I might have been uh, defending the police department. So I think one of the, I think frankly, uh, the values and assets I bring uh, to this exercise is having experienced and uh, provided legal services in a wide variety of contexts for a wide variety of clients, public sector, prosecution, uh, and defense. And into each of those tasks, I work very hard, as is my professional responsibility to do, to assess each and every case on the unique facts presented um, by that case. Yes. Yes, and just to be really clear, the BCA is the investigative agency, and they're in the process of investigating this case. This case has not been presented to our office for prosecution review, but once uh, that's done, um, then our work formally begins. I mean, it's not to say that we're not connected and working with the BCA. Uh, we are doing that. Um, and we're having conversations about the status of their investigation and they're asking us questions and we try to help answer them and we uh, offer suggestions of things that we would like to see because we don't want to have the moment where they present a case to us and we don't believe that they have done everything that we want them to do. So that process needs to play out, right? Now Don's um, engagement um, has already started. And so he's helping us think through a whole host of issues. Um, and uh, once we get the case, Don will be involved with um, also helping us make the determination of what is the right thing to do as it relates to who will make this decision. Um, should it be me in this office and Don? Or should we have this case presented to the grand jury and have 23 members from our community decide that? And then ultimately, if we decide it ourselves, then we're going to have to make that charging decision. We have time for two more questions in the back. Um, have you been in touch with Officer Gannon's legal team or anybody who's representing him? Just remind us who you are and where you're Melissa, from. Melissa, like I said, Ms. Colorado. I have not. So who else is on this team and affecting you two? How many people of color are on this team dealing with the evidence of the state that you're going to um, the team, I, I don't want to, I'll just give you the positions. And, uh, so my first assistant uh, is a part of uh, the team that will help me decide this case. My director of the criminal division, an assistant director of our criminal division. These are management level uh, staff. And then um, another individual who uh, is a senior prosecutor in this office and uh, with respect to the diversity, uh, the one member of the team is African American, and I am Asian American. One last question. Um, Mara Costley with the Department of Press. Um, has the BCA given you information about the, the timeline? No, they haven't uh, given any specific timelines, and I, um, I think it's important that they're doing this as quickly as possible, and I have faith that they're putting every um, effort into getting this done, but I've also said that it needs to be thorough. And so it's a balance of trying to get all of that done. I think another thing too is to just to keep in mind, um, uh, this case is different from Jamar Clark, but it still is the same investigative agency, and it is a, what I would describe as a high profile case. Uh, but from the moment in which uh, the shooting incident involving Jamar Clark's death occurred on November 15th. Uh, the county attorney's office ultimately made their final decision on March 30th, which is about four and a half months. And the BCA investigation in that particular case uh, took about 13 weeks. And then the county attorney's office uh, um, did their work and that took about seven weeks. I'm not saying that um, the timelines are going to be similar. I'm just providing you 
that information for some frame of reference as it relates to how the BCA would work. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. As I in previous, we will be making the uh, video and the comments of both uh, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Troy available as soon as we can. I'm hoping 11.30ish on our website. We'll shoot out a quick note about all of this at that time as well. Just so you don't have to kind of go hunting through our website for the latest version.